Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and it is time to look at the results of the poll that I posted uh, last week. So here we are. I ask you a question: What topic do you want to see next? And this is the results you can see on the screen. Data science is actually winning by just one vote. So there's 19 votes for data science analytics project. There is 18 votes for mobile app. There's actually quite significant amount of people interested in that. So we might as well combine those two. I'm not sure if you know I will have enough time to do that, but we'll see if we can enhance the data science project with mobile app at the end. Then comes applied machine learning. Once again, I think we might be adding this to data science project in the end. And there's you know some interest in bots and embedded programming. Um, I'm actually surprised not that many of you are interested in embedded programming, but you know. So we're stopping on data science projects. Uh, before I talk about the project itself, let's go through the additional topics that you've talked about and see, you know, what's um, what are you suggested. So this combined data analytics with mobile app that is um, something I already thought about looking at the answers you did, you know, because there's significant interest in both. So why not? But we'll see how that goes. Um, smart home um, that is very expensive. So I definitely interested in that but that will require significant investments from my side into hardware and all those you know sensors and everything and i simply don't have enough money for that um instagram clone or snapchat clone again this is mobile stuff so we are maybe gonna do that later um converting contest leaderboards and other data into graphical data um Sounds very boring, but we're going to do something similar within the data science project we're going to do now. And then Telegram, Discord bots, uh, um, and React Native organizing apps like Trello. That's a lot of requests here in one thing. <laughs> so we're going to see what we're going to do about that. Okay, uh, Instagram social network is cool. That is, again, something we'll maybe do later. Um, interesting and growing field in cryptocurrencies, mining and trading. I am honestly not so hyped about cryptocurrencies themselves. So I do um, find the blockchain idea fascinating and the original paper is very interesting, but the cryptocurrencies craze that's going on right now is kind of looks alien to me, to be honest. So, you know, I'm not an expert in this field, so I'm not gonna touch it. Um, okay, using React Native to build a native app that takes advantages of native capabilities. Um, again, we might do that at some point later after we're done with data science uh, part. Support service, so I guess, this is more a support bot in this case, right? Because it's interesting how bot can communicate. Uh, maybe as a future course, again, I think, I mean, I'm interested in all of those topics, so we might as well cover all of them at some point. Um, people interested in implementing game related bots. Again, we might do bots. I don't know which one. I think they're all, you know, most of the bots are kind of working in a similar way, so. Um, right, include Firebase or with offline functionality, syncing offline data. Okay, so I guess this is a React Native project with using all the features. That is a lot of features. I that would be very hard for me to come up with app that utilizes all of that, but we'll see how that goes. A complex game using React, React Native, and Electron. That is three different projects. I'm sorry, but that's too much. So we might do a game, but it's gonna be you know for either one of those. And we already did React and Electron, so we're gonna go for React Native, I guess. Um, we'll see how that goes. Okay, uh, storyteller app. Where many users write one story. Um, that is, you know what? Um, if you are watching this video right now, I'm very interested to hear more about that concept because this, this actually, this description is very intriguing. Um, if you wanna do that yourself, I will be happy to help you. If not, then please explain in the comments what exactly do you mean, how how it should work, because I'm I'm not familiar with this concept. And simple mobile payments using Telegram. I do not want to delve into payments. Um, never work with Telegram payments API either, but you know, it shouldn't be too hard. So we'll see once we get to the bots. But for now, we're stopping on data science projects. So first of all, let's talk about what data science is. Uh, yes, I'm gonna use Wikipedia as a reference. Close that. All right, so data science is a field or discipline or approach or you know call it whatever you want um, about extracting knowledge or insights from data which could be in various forms structured or more uh, frequently unstructured which uh, they say similar to data mining but I would actually say that it includes data mining as one of the um, uh, sub fields sub genres no that's that's the wrong way to put it but you get what I say 
Um, it relies on statistics, data analytics, uh, data extraction, knowledge extraction, mathematics, information science, like whatever you can imagine, including machine learning, classification, cluster analysis, all this kind of stuff is here, right? And we're going to do most, if not all of that. So I, I'm still thinking about machine learning, what we might do at some point once we have a nice data set. I might just ask my colleagues at the university who do like crazy machine learning stuff to help me here. And maybe they will help us build some very good um, machine learning um, algorithm that would provide us better insights or predict stuff, you know, like this. Okay, so now that we kind of roughly defined what data science project is, um, let's talk about the project itself. So as I said before, we're going to do a gaming related project. And the idea is very simple. So there's a uh, tons of games coming out every day. And some of them are good, some of them are terrible, some of them are okay. And you never know what to play, right? Um, or you never know uh, whether you should buy some game or not, like take Destiny 2 for PS4 and PC. It's out for PS4. So a lot of people played it. A lot of critics already rated it. Uh, but it's going to be out on PC in um, about a month, I think, right? So I, I'm still not sure if I should buy it or not. And here's the problem. Um, this number right here, it literally tells me nothing. It tells me that 83% of, um, it, how do you put it? It tells me that people like it up to 83%, I guess, like this, right? So this is still a terrible way of putting it. So the idea is that all of the reviews, it doesn't even end on games. It also is related to pretty much any product out there, right? All of those reviews use scores to rate the game. What does this score tell you in terms of uh, features and what kind of game it is and so on and so forth, right? Nothing. It doesn't tell you anything. It tells you, okay, this specific reviewer who has his own agenda, who likes some things and doesn't like other things, likes this game with this percentage, right? Which again, if you don't have any background knowledge about that reviewer, you will not know what to do with it because all of this is very subjective. So um, the better way of looking at the reviews would be to actually try and extract the important things from the review, right? What kind of um, keywords he used? Is it fast paced game, slow paced game, boring, fun, or, you know, any keywords that he might have used more than once, for example, any important keywords? Uh, what kind of games did he mention within the review comparing this game to? What kind of overall sentiment does the article has? Uh, and maybe even build the author profile to see what games he liked and what games he disliked, right? You know, so assume that this score will be basically like, not like, and then uh, look at his profile and uh, try to grade, you know, say, okay, this guy likes a lot of FPS games. So he's probably a first person shooter guy. And most of his FPS games will be um, very good reviewed because he knows the field and so on and so forth. So this is what we're going to try to do, right? Um, I hope the idea is clear. If not, let me know in the comments. I'll try to explain it better next time. But now let's talk about what we actually need to do, right? So I'm, I'm just going to use this uh, online vector for drawing the rough architecture. Um, so we are going to utilize um, microservices, as I said before, right? What we're going to do is we're going to take the open critic. It's going to be open critic. Uh, we're going to assume that open critic is our um, main data source, right? For now. So we'll see, maybe we'll use more data sources. Like, for example, if we go to steam, you will actually see the same problem with um, user reviews, or maybe even worse problem. I don't know. So if we take, I don't know, XCOM more of the chosen um, as very positive reviews, 86% um, of people reviewed that it is good, which again, tells you nothing. So it says, yeah, okay, most of the people like it. But since it's an expansion to the existing game, you have no idea how many of people like the original game, for example, and if they play a lot of um, turn based strategies and so on and so forth. Actually, by looking at the text here, you can take way uh, you can tell way more. Again, those people use ratings as well, which tell you kind of nothing. So maybe we'll add another data source later on just to show you how multiple data sources work. Um, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna do this and now other data sources. 
um, towards. There we go. Okay, so um, and this, so we have this and this, right? So this is our data sources, um, and we're gonna use uh, data processing pipelines. So the first thing is um, I'm gonna do that. I don't really want uh, or a bit more neutral, right? So um, what I was talking about, I'm gonna just roughly outline the way it's gonna work. Um, it doesn't mean we're gonna do exactly this, but this is what I have in mind right now. This is how I usually plan the projects. I, it might change as well, you know, because I, I don't really know what will come out of most of these things. I have a rough understanding, uh, but we're gonna see. So we're gonna use um, Coronal P, which is an natural language processing library that will extract keywords. Uh, this is uh, Stanford's library. It's a very good one. And this is a terrible color choice. So I'm gonna make it white. There we go. So we're gonna, um, gonna take those data sources. Um, can I draw this? I, I'm gonna draw terrible lines. Um, that is not what I wanted to draw. <laughs> right, let me try that again. Here and here. Okay, uh, no, that's... God damn it. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's assume that's a lot, you know, that's that's an arrow. That's an arrow. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, uh, so we're going to take coronal P. We're going to extract keywords. Um, then we're going to do it in parallel. We're going to take a tool called uh, Fox. This is a tool developed in our research group that actually groups a bunch of other tools and makes them uh, work better together or produce better results than they are do on their own. It's gonna extract entities and maybe relations. So I'm not sure if we need relations, but we're gonna see. So we're gonna use Fox over here once again. Please get quite fun. There we go. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, and we're gonna do this. Um, again, since uh, those are non-related things, we can actually do that um, in parallel. I think I managed to draw the arrow were more or less better than first time. Okay, so we're gonna extract the interrelations here. We're gonna, ah, you know what? Um, actually, the thing is, um, Coronal P also allows us to extract sentiments. We're gonna, we're gonna use it for both, right? So because we want to know the sentiment of the specific article, to know if the author actually likes it or not. So here, um, thing here just expand it a bit there we go okay things here cool so we're gonna extract relations keyword sentiments um we are going to work on articles primarily is there anything else we can extract from there so we can extract sentiments we can extract entities keywords um we already care about organizations or locations mentioned, right? Because we will only focus on other games, for example. Uh, we're gonna link them to, so here's the thing, yeah. So Fox will link them to DBpedia. Uh, if you're not familiar with the project, it's um, essentially a Wikipedia that is converted into a semantic knowledge graph. So um, everything that is available on Wikipedia is available on DBpedia in machine readable format. And Fox will provide us the links to those things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enrich it uh, because Fox, even though DBpedia has a lot of things, doesn't have everything. Um, oh, that's watercolor, let's do it a bit brighter. There we go. So we're gonna take um, Wikidata and enrich entities. So this is gonna be another point. Uh, we're gonna basically take whatever Fox returns to us and uh, put it through Wiki, Wikidata to actually get more interesting and uh, human readable data. Uh, because, you know, basically DBpedia data is machine readable and not all of it is there and there might be not be quite a lot of fields. Uh, Wikidata can be a bit better in this respect. So we're gonna do that. Um, I think at least for now, we can start with that and see what will uh, work, what will not. So first of all, this all at no okay. that way to group it like flipping uh, group. There we go. Cool. So group. So actually, we will have an vector first, right? So with this, this we'll have article vector. Uh, I don't see what I'm typing. This is terrible. Please give me a white color. There we go. 
and the article extractor will send it to the processing bits, right? Um, and then once we're done, we're gonna have a storage service. Uh, wrong, there we go, storage. Storage service, or I guess just call it storage in this case. We're gonna talk about services a bit later. I'm gonna make it black, there we go, a bit it here and then the thing is they basically will independently send it to the, the, the command draw and it to the storage service right so um and actually now that i'm thinking we should actually store the uh, no, the original article data as well so basically what we will do is we'll extract the article get the author name article text date of publishing and so on and so forth and send it to the storage right away. Then we throw it into the processors, which will do their work and throw the updated data into the storage. Maybe we'll change the pipeline a bit. Maybe storage should trigger the processing, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we do that. And then basically um, as a front end, we're gonna have our one, one and two. So this is gonna be REST API. Uh, it's a very straightforward way. It's going to be our one simple API that uh, talks, or basically it should only read from our storage, right? Because we don't have to modify data in any way. And then this is going to be um, front end. Go uh, make it here first and then make it white. There we go. Front end, which will basically communicate with the REST API. That's that's about it. You know, it's a pretty straightforward uh, structure. So as I said, we're going to use microservices, and each and one of those things will be one microservice that will work um, independently, and it will be scalable at least horizontally. We're going to take about uh, talk about scalability separately in a later uh, later videos. Um, Calling this building data science with JavaScript is not completely fair because we're using tools that are not made with JavaScript like Cornel, P and Fox, these both are Java uh, services or Java tools. But you know, we're gonna use Docker for everything. So um, hopefully you will forgive my uh, frivolous desire, I guess, to call this building data science with JavaScript. We are gonna use JavaScript for everything else. Um, like using it for extraction, for example, works really well. Using it for querying Wikidata works really well. Storage, we already did that. REST API again, front end again, we already did all of that. So we're gonna stick with that. Yeah, um, that's basically it. Um, the idea is to talk a bit about microservices in my next video, explain to you uh, what the microservices are, what the advantages and disadvantages are, and how are we going to use them here specifically, what kind of patterns and methods of communicating between them we're going to use. Uh, and then do the first live stream where I start coding the, I guess, article extractor and first processors, maybe Cornel P or something like this. Uh, if you have more ideas about what we can try to extract from the articles, do let me know. I'm open to suggestions. Once again, I'm, I might as well be forgetting something. Maybe we can get more cool things extracted. I will have a look at what kind of extraction uh, we did before because I might be just forgetting something, you know. But yeah, that's that's basically what I had in mind. Uh, do let me know what you have, uh, what do you think about it? If you have any suggestions or maybe you see some problems with this, I'm open to discussion as usual. Thank you for watching as usual. I see you next time. Bye.